Hello, Lyndon here again, and uh, I want to give you a fantastic improvisational pattern, uh, which is called thirds. It's one that I use all the time uh, in improvisations. I think it's fantastic as an exercise, really, really good for improvisation as well. Um, by the way, before I dive into that, as we say, dive into it, um, thank you so much for all of the people that have supported these videos by buying me a coffee always makes my wife and I dance around the house for a short amount of time, which is really good fun. So thank you. And if you'd like to be one of those people, if you find these videos useful, then please feel free to click on the link below. So um, a thirds pattern is something that is really, really, really worth your while getting down. And the easiest way for me to explain it to you is to take you through to the other room and have a look at our beautiful piano because there's just something about the piano which is laid out in such a lovely visual way. It'd be easier for me to show you on there. So let's go through to the other room and have a look. So this is a thirds pattern and the thing with the piano, because it's so beautifully visually logically laid out in a way that a saxophone just isn't. If you have a look at it on a piano, you can see how incredibly simple this pattern is. And I'm going to work in uh, the key of C major on the piano, uh, because that's the only key that I can play in. And um, it's really easy to find C because it's always to the left of these two black notes. So this is C and D and E and F and G and A and B and C. Uh, and a thirds pattern then is just going up three notes. So you go to the first note and then the third and then just keep doing that pattern. And coming down from there And that's the thirds pattern, it's as simple as that. Really useful, super useful pattern. So isn't it fantastic just having a look at the piano and seeing where everything is. The piano is so visual. I mean, the saxophone is pretty beautiful as well, uh, but you can't see where things are in the same way that you can on a piano. By the way, is that a different sax that you're using, Lyndon? Yes, it is. Is this one of your Goldington saxophones? Yes, it is actually. Yes, thank you. And is it silver? Is it solid silver? No, because it would weigh a ton if it was. Um, silver plated then? Yes. Are you talking to yourself? Yes, I am. Uh, are you slightly bonkers? Mm, maybe. So we're going to have a look at this pattern and we're going to do exactly the same shape, but we're going to be using the key of D major. And so the notes are going to be D, F sharp, E, G, F sharp, A, G, B, A, C sharp, B, D, C sharp, E, D, and F sharp. Sounds like such a mouthful, but if I just play it for you, I'm going to put a worksheet up anyway, so don't worry. And coming down from there, So that is the, exactly the same pattern. And if I put that to a backing track, it's gonna sound really nice. If I just do it straight up and straight down, I'm not doing anything interesting with it yet, but we will do. So I've, uh, I'm using Session Band Jazz Volume 4, and this is Sting Swing. Sounds very nice, actually. Have a listen. I mean, it already sounds really, really, really nice. 
But what we're going to do, so I would encourage you to take this pattern and practice it fully in lots of different keys because it's so, so useful. And the way that we're going to make it really useful for improvisational purposes is to use what we call a, a fragment or a snippet or a bit of it. So you don't use the whole pattern, you just use a bit of it to make a lovely phrase. And where, so where, where would you start? Well, what about the chord tones, the D, the F sharp, the A, the C sharp, and the E, all of those chord tones are really sort of viable candidates um, to start a phrase on. So I'm going to start a phrase on F sharp. I'm going to go F sharp, A, G, B, A, C sharp. And, and then I'm going to repeat that. But the second time, I'm not going to play the C sharp. I'm just going to land on the A and it's going to give a really nice question and answer kind of feel. Have a listen. If I play it without the backing track. And the second time. Now, if I put that to the backing track, that is going to sound gorgeous. It's going to sound so nice. I mean, I could just do that and do that and do that because it sounds so nice. And if you, you, the second time I was playing around with the timing a little bit or the tonguing, so I was double tonguing some notes, it sounds absolutely gorgeous. It's a really, really, really good pattern. So, um, so that is an ascending pattern. Uh, and what we, can, we, what we can do is do exactly the same type of idea, but descending. So again, where do I start? Well, what about one of the chord tones? What about if I start on the ninth, which would be the E and descend? And I'm going to do exactly the same type of trick. So I'm going to descend from the E, E, C sharp, D, B, C sharp, A. And then the second time, E, C sharp, D, B, C sharp. So you get that question and answer feel. That would sound like this without the backing track. And now if I do that with the backing track, And again, it sounds really, really nice. So now what I could do is I could put those two ideas together. And if I've practiced this pattern loads and loads and loads, then it's not really that difficult to execute because I think to myself, well, I'm just starting on the third, which is the F sharp and ascending a bit. And then I'm starting on the ninth, which is the E and descending a bit. So there's not that much mental activity going on, if you see what I mean. So I'm gonna put those two phrases together and it's gonna sound so lovely. putting those two ideas together and it sounds absolutely gorgeous. That just sounds lovely. And because you're not giving so much of the pattern to the listener's ear, they can't decode what you're doing. If you play the whole pattern, straight up and straight down, then even a non-musician can kind of hear that there's some sort of pattern going on and they can start to anticipate what it is that you're going to play next. But when you give a little fragment like this, there's not enough of the, the pattern to decode. So they will just come to some other conclusion about 
how you're able to do this, that it's not a pattern, you're just a fantastic improviser, which you are. So um, it just sounds lovely, really simple, super effective. I would do it all the time. And I'm gonna add one more thing to my improvisational idea. I'm gonna put a chromatic uh, connection in there. Now, if you're not sure about what chromatic scales are, then you should go and have a look at one of my videos and I'll put a link in the description below uh, and I'm going to make a chromatic connection and I'll try and make it really, really clear where I'm doing that. Um, so have a listen to this. And again, it's just going to sound gorgeous. Amazing, sounds absolutely fantastic. And the chromatic connection that I was making, just to be specific, was from A down to F sharp. So I'm going A, G sharp, G, F sharp, which is just a little chromatic run. Now look, this is just two ideas that uh, I've given you uh, using a thirds pattern. And you could take this, like, you could play any part of this. It's all going to sound nice uh, when you're improvising. It's a really good pattern to have. And I think you should definitely, you'll definitely benefit from getting this down in every key. From the dry kind of point of view, it's a really, really good finger exercise to do as well. So um, somebody did say to one of the comments was, took so long to get to the point. I hope I've been quick enough to get to the point in this video. Now look, I've got a question for you. Would it be useful for me to record these videos? I mean, I can make a whole video if you want with just backing tracks um, in major or minor keys or, or other types of chord as well. Uh, I can do that for you, but I need to know if it's useful or not. I'm gonna let this run uh, in this video uh, for you to have a little jam with uh, just, just for a bit now. And I really do hope you found that useful. Um, once again, thank you for all the people that have shown support. If these videos are useful to you, please let me know because it really does encourage me. I do read all of the comments and try to respond to them all. And, uh, and if you want to buy me a coffee, you can. I've had so much coffee. I need to start drinking decaf. Um, and uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Here comes the backing track. Take care. Bye.